Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving an equation with factorials. We have 2 to the power a plus 2 to the power b equals c factorial. a, b, c are non-negative integers. And we're looking for a, b, c values. First of all, let's observe that we can find some uh, particular solutions. For example, if a and b are both equal to 0, then we get 2 to the power 0 plus 2 to the power 0, which is equal to 2, 1 plus 1. And 2 can equal c factorial because 2 factorial equals 2. So from here we basically get a solution for a, b equals 0 and c equals 2. So 0, 0, 2 is a solution. It's kind of easy to see, that's why I wanted to show you this particular solution right here. Now, uh, and then you can try different values. For example, for c equals c equals 2, we got a solution. We could also start it off with c, obviously. That would probably be easier, by the way. Start with c values. How about uh, smaller c values? For example, do we have a solution for c equals 0? Well, since we're looking for non-negative integer solutions, we, we should test c equals 0. And if we do, we're going to get 2 to the power a plus 2 to the power b equals 0 factorial, which is equal to 1. Now, notice that the smallest power of 2 uh, that uses non-negative integers is 1, because 2 to the power 0 is the smallest in this case. So if one of them is 1, the other one has to be 0. But 2 to the power a or b can never be 0, so we don't get any solutions in this case, obviously, right? Or if c equals 1, we get the same picture, because 0 factorial equals 1 factorial. Therefore, we have the same type of situation here. We don't have any solutions for c equals 1 either. And then you can test c equals 2, c equals 3. Obviously, we cannot test all the cases, right? When you have a situation like this, these are called Diophantin equations. But at the same time, this is a factorial equation, so it's kind of nice. You know, these equations are fun to solve. Uh, we can't test all the solutions. Uh, either we have to show that there are no more solutions or there are no solutions at all, but we already have a solution. Is that the only solution? We have to find out. Uh, obviously, we can't test all the cases, uh, but we can find some contradictions. Maybe uh, there are only a limited number of solutions, or maybe there are infinitely many solutions. So we have to find, you know, something that will show us one of these. So, and since we can't really test all the ABC values, we have to approach it from a modular arithmetic perspective. Uh, great. So modular arithmetic, I, I think we've done some problems before, but modular arithmetic is very powerful tool. It just uh, deals with remainders, right? Modular arithmetic deals with remainders. So instead of looking at the numbers themselves, we pick a certain number and then divide our numbers by that number and check the remainders. So what am I talking about? For example, if we have, uh, let's say we are working in mod 5. I don't know why I picked mod 5. It could be 3, it could be 7, it could be any number, but prime mods are more interesting. You wouldn't really want to check something for mod 6 because if something is divisible by 3, then it's, well, not necessarily. If something is divisible by 6, then it's divisible by 3 and 2, but anyways. Mod 5. So, what am I looking at? I want to find the remainders when something is divided by 5. So, if you look at powers of 2, for example, 2 to the power 0, obviously that's going to be 1. 2 to the power 1, 2 to the power 2 is going to be 4. And 2 to the power of 3 is going to be 8, but I'm not interested in 8. I want to divide the 8 by 5 and look at the remainder. And that's going to give me a 3. And then 2 to the power of 4 is going to be a 16. And 16 divided by 5 is going to leave us with the remainder 1. And then uh, 32 is going to give us a 2 and so on and so forth. So this pattern is just going to repeat. 1, 2, 4, 3, 1, 2, 4, 3, forever, right? So that's the beauty of modular arithmetic. And since... You're dividing by 5, you only get a certain number of remainders. So there's only 5 remainders possible. What does 0 mean? It means that our number is a multiple of 5, therefore when you divide by 5, the remainder is 0. For example, 25 is congruent to 0 mod 5. Anyways, I don't want to talk too much about mods. Let's go ahead and uh, talk about how we're going to use it. So these are the possible remainders when um, you raise 2 to a power. So it can only be one of these. Notice that you can never get a 0. Great. So what happens say, uh, for 2 to the power b? You get the same thing. So when you add these two, 
you're gonna get all these combinations like one plus one, one plus two, one plus four, one plus three, and then two plus one, two plus two, so on and so forth. So the idea is, can we get uh, the same thing on both sides? For example, if two to the power a plus two to the power b is c factorial, and let's say uh, two, two to the power a plus two to the power b is, um, let's say zero mod five, Okay, so let's say this is 0 mod 5. Can C, C factorial be zero, 0 mod 5 too? Yes, if C is greater than or equal to 5, then C factorial is going to be 0 mod 5. Awesome. Then you could possibly find a solution. Now, how can you make 0 by adding 2 to the power and 2 to the power B? That's easy to make. You can pick 1 and 4 or 2 and 3. You see, those are going to give you 0 mod 5. So it's possible, but that doesn't mean we have a solution. It just means that uh, we can find a possible solution. Okay, great. So that is mod 5. What about the mod 3 case? Very similar. You can kind of test it out. But I want to look at mod 7, which is more interesting. So let's go ahead and take a look at it, uh, mod 7 perspective. Okay, in mod 7, these are the possible remainders for 2 to the power a. 2 to the power 0, again, is going to be 1, and then 2, and then 4, and then 8 is just going to be 1 again. So, uh, because 8 divided by 7 leaves a remainder of 1, so it's going to be 1, and then 2 to the power 4 is going to be 16, and 16 divided by 7 is going to leave us with 2. So, this pattern is going to repeat. Why does this repeat? So, when you look at a higher power, like let's say 2 to the power 10, 2 to the power 10 definitely can be written as, you know, 2 to the power um, 2. Oh, actually, not that. that's not the case. 2 to the power 3, I was going to say. Okay, 2 to the power 3, and then you can raise it to the power 3, and then times 2. Now, 2 to the power 3, as you know, is 1 mod 7. Therefore, you're just going to be dealing with 1 times 2, and that is 2 again. So our idea is always to get a number less than 7 because we are working mod 7. So we're only working with a finite uh, number of elements, which is what is cool about modular arithmetic. Anyways, okay, great. So let's go ahead and test this out. Uh, we have this 2 to the power a and 2 to the power b, and if you add these, you're going to get something interesting. Well, in the case of mod 5, I was able to get 0 mod 5, but in mod 7, I'm not able to do it because if you if you don't have a 3, so we can't do like 3 and 4 to get a 0 mod 7, or we don't have a 2 and 5. This basically means that 2 to the power a plus 2 to the power b can never be 0 mod 7. But if c is greater or equal to 7, then c factorial is going to be divisible by 7, obviously, and it is going to be 0 mod 7, which means that for c values that are greater or equal to 7, we do not have any solutions. Okay, great. So that gives us an upper bound, so we have to check for c values that are less than 7. So we, for c equals 0, we got a solution. I'm sorry. For c equals 0, we found that there are no solutions. For c equals 1, there are no solutions. And for c equals 2, we got 0, 0, 2, which is a single solution. Let's go ahead and test out some other values like c equals 3. If c is equal to 3, then you're going to get 3 factorial equals 2 to the power a plus 2 to the power b, which is equal to 6. Now notice that 4 plus 2 is equal to 6, so from here you can get a equals 2, b equals 1, or a equals 1, b equals 2. Obviously a and b are interchangeable. Great. So that gives us another, another ordered pair and I'll write that at the end. 1, 2, 3, and 2, 1, 3. Great. What about for c equals 4? Well, c equals 4 means 4 factorial is equal to 2 to the power a plus 2 to the power b, but 4 factorial is 24. Can we get 24 by adding 2 powers of 2? And the answer is yes. You can add 8 plus 16. That's going to give you 24, as well as 16 plus 8. So obviously, from here, you can get the value of a equals 3, b equals 4, or a equals 4, B equals 3. Again, we get two solutions from here, a pair of solutions. Great. Is there another value, for example, for C equals 5? You get 5 factorial equals 2 to the power A plus 2 to the power B, and that is 120. Unfortunately, by adding two powers of 2, obviously, you have to check where um, B is, and A and B are both uh, less than or equal to 
uh, let's see, seven, right? Uh, actually six, because two to the power six is 64. And unfortunately, we don't get any solutions from here. And C equals six is also not gonna give you any solution. Six factorial is equal to 720. And we are unable to uh, get 720 by adding two powers of two. And basically, that gives us all the solutions here. We have the 0, 0, 2. We have the 1, 2, 3. The 2, 1, 3. And then we have the 3, 4, 4. And we have the 4, 3, 4. Remember, the third number is always C. And we end up with four, uh, I mean five solutions. And this brings us to the end of this video. Well, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment. Like and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.